Yes, some point in the 80s, the first thing I ever drove was a knackered old dumper truck. I can't remember the exact age, but I was still at school. I think I was around about 12, 13 years old. Uh, it was a two-cylinder job. You started it with a starter handle and a brick on the accelerator pedal. You'd build up the speed with a starter handle, then flick a valve on the top. Uh, keep it going until it starts showing some signs of life, and then flick the other valve. Then as soon as it started, you'd pull the starter out of that, run around, take the brick off the accelerator pedal, then have a lie down for half an hour because you'd be too knackered to do anything else. Um, I had all sorts of fun with that dumper truck, driving around the fields with my mates in the bucket, my first crash, be it into a chicken shed, and the occasional trip down the country road with my parents away. Shh, don't tell anybody. Although we were the only farm down that very quiet single track country lane in Wales. Once I became sufficient at not crashing a rear wheel steered dumper truck, I was promoted to a Grey Fergie TF20. I love that little tractor. I don't have any pictures of it. This is the picture of one that I bought later on in life, which I've uh, done up with a little bit of help from a friend who reconditioned the engine for me. I then got a job on a dairy farm in Penley while I was driving a Ford 5000. These things are worth a lot of money these days, but at the time it was just an old tractor. Everything was heavy. It had no back window, so when I was muck spreading in it, sometimes the, all the muck would come inside the cab. I'd try and always point the tractor into the wind, but it'd still come in somehow. I always dreamed of having a Ford TW35. Biggies. I uh, still want one today actually, I'm not sure what I'd do with it, I and mean, I've only got an acre of land which is boggy so it'd sink in my correct mass and it won't fit in my um, workshop. So uh, I think I shall be uh, sticking with the little grey Fergie. Pep, my Land Rover, I likes my Land Rover as I does. Happy days and good entertainment, pointing the Land Rover at stuff and trying to drive over it. And then it'd be a couple of days in the workshop repairing all the damage I'd done to it. And when it wasn't axle deep stuck in mud in it, I did do some work with it. Sadly been away from home all the time and also not having the farm or well, not doing anything with the farm because I'm away all the time. I have no use for the Land Rover at the moment so it's been parked up for the past 10 years. Uh, got a gearbox problem as well and a few other things. It will be fixed one day, I'm never going to sell it, I will drive it again. Now, I bought myself a JCB 3CX when I was just 21 years old. Not many 21 year olds can say they've done that now, can they? 
Um, I used it on my small holding. I also hired myself out of it. Loved playing with it. Hell of a beast to play with. Sadly, constantly vandalised. Constantly having things nicked off of it. I couldn't keep up with the repairs on it, having everything nicked. Um, I did own it for nearly 20 years though. And not so long ago, I used it to do the foundations to my workshop when that was built. I also did the foundations for the extensions of this house as well that I live in now in Ellesmere. So it came from Wrexham to Ellesmere with it. I have sold it now though, sadly. I do miss it. 24 years of age I was when I started my driving school. Also is when I bought this house as well. That was a good year. Started off my driving school with this X-Reg, it's 1.24 Fiesta, which was two years old when I bought it. And I brought it from another driving school, so it already had the dual controls in it, keeping my costs down as a start-up cost. I also worked as an off-road driving instructor for Toyota in the year. Uh, I did the, the Toyota Hilux and the Land Cruisers, that was fun. And Mercedes as well, I did the instructing for them. Then I also did the Plus Plus lessons for the council as well. Keeping myself on, well, really busy. Nice, nice range of work. After about three years of abuse, I got rid of the Ford Fiesta. It was starting to uh, look its age. I bought myself this X Demo. It's a six months old 05 Ford Focus, which was lovely. It's comfortable. It's more legroom than the Fiesta. And bear in mind, I'm the one sitting here for 12 hours a day. I needed that. Then, disaster, we had the credit crunch in 2008. I limped along to about 2010, but I just wasn't earning any money. I didn't go broke, I just wasn't earning anything. It wasn't showing any signs of improving. Every man and dog who'd lost his job during the credit crunch had become a driving instructor, and there was less people learning to drive anyway. So with the two together, I just wasn't earning anything. And with that, it doesn't matter how much you love a job, if you're not making any money doing it, then it's time to change in it. Now, there was a bit of an overlap between the driving school and the coach driving. I did my PSV when I was quiet with the driving school and I started doing a bit of driving for owners coaches. Then as the driving school became quieter and quieter, I did more and more coach driving. So yeah, I always get me hand in. Um, now there was a bit of a scary moment. I remember first time out in the coach full of passengers very nervous you make one mistake you got 51 witnesses sitting behind you and you don't tell them this is your first time out by yourself there were some good days out though we did a few trips up the lake districts i love doing that one of my favorites was doing the air shows southport and Cosworth. i used to do that anyway i used to go to them anyway and now i'm getting paid i used to get me breakfast and my lunch vouchers as well on the way in as a coach driver and a few drinks brilliant Another place I used to go to is to take people to Southampton on the cruises. I used to take them to the QE2 and all sorts. And I'd pick them up again. Things I didn't like, airport runs. Taking them's fine, it's when you collect them. Because if a flight gets delayed, that can really knacker up your hours. Especially if you're going to like a London airport. Um, you've got 51 tired passengers. have already been delayed and messed around at the airport and they're cheesed off. And then you've got to tell them you're going to run out of hours, 20 miles short of Shrewsbury, and we've got to sit in a lay-by for nine hours. <laughs> Never goes down well. Also, I didn't like schools much. School kids being school kids, they were a bit of a nightmare. And why is it when you take them on trips, like the Oblivion at Orton Towers, they're fine. But I'm sorry, I cannot believe that my coach driving skills are worse than a nemesis. But I'd be driving along, nice and steady, and you did, oh, miss, Peter's just been sick. And don't think for one second, dear little Peter has been sick in one spot, which perfectly would be on the floor. No, 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 no. Little Peter will have been sick on the curtains, the window, the seat, the seat next to him, the seat in front of him, and on the floor. Once he's gone off, of course, the rest of them will bloody start then as well, won't they? So... Where I worked, the driver was responsible for cleaning the coach, so once that happened, you were going to be a long time trying to get on, getting vomit out of curtains and seats before you could go. Now this was a lot, a lot of fun. And if ever you win the lottery, forget Ferrari, forget Aston Martin, get yourself one of these. It's not a tank, 
It's an Abbott self-propelled gun or SPG. But when you come skidding up to the halt behind the little Range Rover thingy in front of you and you can see them all looking in the mirrors, what they are seeing is a tank. Now, the Abbott self-propelled gun can hit things 14 miles away, but it's really accurate is around about 11 miles. It's powered by a Rolls-Royce six-cylinder multi-fuel engine, which delivers about 240 brake horsepower. It'll do about 30 miles an hour. Weighs about 14 and a half ton, and you can buy one these days for around about £40,000 if you've got that kind of money. But it's say half the price of an Aston Martin. For that, you could drive it in a field. But if you obtain your category H for tracked things um, and fit rubber pads to the tracks, it's tax and MOT free. Best of all, London congestion charge exempt. So perfect for the school run, then, isn't it? My first truck, Eeyore, or V940 EAW, was a good old Volvo FH12 460. I liked it because it had a dent in most of the panels, so there was no pressure on me not to scratch it. But the interior was good. She also had metal bumpers, not the old plastic things modern day trucks call bumpers. Pulled well too, I don't remember much coming past me in that one. I can remember taking it to London. Don't see many v regs well you won't see any v regs in London now with the emissions. Sadly I went on holiday for a week, came back to find somebody had written it off. I only had it a year. So then came SY54 AZX. She was a nice truck but came with a very heavy gear change. It was the type with the cables in the gearbox. Plastic bumpers too. I've never liked plastic bumpers. This was the truck I did my first YouTube video in. The biggies were the day in the life of a truck driver and the gear change. I was in AZX around three years when the London emissions moved up a peg and AZX couldn't go in so I had to move trucks again. She is still with us today though, AZX is, is on the short runs. DX57 BYL, now most of you have seen this lorry on the Intermoebi, I filmed my reversing video in this one. It's also my first auto or eye shift as Volvo call it and the traffic in London was so much easier with this, nowhere near as tired at the end of the day. Again, BYL is still on the fleet. My only thing with this truck is somebody nicked the fridge from under the bunk, so I, I should have had a fridge and I didn't. Also, because it was missing, when I hit the brakes, everything from under the side lockers would slide out from underneath my bed because there was no fridge there. KV64 XFP. I've got everything now. Fridge and a microwave. Lovely, a lot quieter than my Volvos of the past. Aircon that also gives me a night heater, but a system that keeps me cool at night as well when it's too hot. I can say in my Penton's career, I've driven the first generation, the version 2 and now the 3. What a difference it is, the latest shape from the first generation. So much quieter, a lot more comfortable. By God the good. Now, I've been driving my ex driving school Ford Focus as my daily runner. But that comes to an end of its life, and I got myself a van. And if you're going to get a van, then do it properly, make it a Ford Transit van. I wanted something that would tow the trailer, and I could get loads of stuff in, and this was perfect. Although I could have done with the four-wheel drive one, as reversing the trailer up my driveway was a bit of a struggle for it. Sadly, this one was full of electrical faults, and one day I was fitting a reversing camera to the back, when I leaned on the roof and my arm went straight through the roof. Turns out, although it's wax oiled and well looked after underneath, the only thing holding the roof together was the paint. I do miss it, it was really useful the two years I had it. Wouldn't say no to another one, although I'd spend a bit more on one next time and get something a bit newer. 
Aha! My secret little bit of fun on the side. My 2009 Triumph Scrambler. Basically it's a Bonneville. Slightly lifted suspension and the exhaust up the side. I bought this just after I passed my bike test in 2011. It was two years old and had just 2,000 miles on the clock. Perfect bike for someone who's just passed the test. As it isn't overly powered so it won't try and kill you. But I've never felt it's underpowered. For me it feels quick and the 900cc engine isn't an overly stressed so it'll last forever unless you want to tune it up and squeeze every horsepower out of it. I like it as it is because it's quick enough for me and it keeps my driving license clean. Get anything too quick you start getting points on your license. I can also wear flying goggles. Flying goggles are incredibly cool. Sadly, when my van died, so did my dad, and I inherited his 1.2 Skoda Rapid. Now, I'm a Ford person myself, but as a car, there's nothing wrong with it at all. Well built, reliable, cheap to run, perfect if I want to go long distance anywhere, and it's got everything you'll need from built-in sat-nav to cruise control and aircon. Not a car for the motoring enthusiast, I would say, it's actually a bit boring. But it's a damn good car for people who aren't interested in cars. And I'm not selling it for sentimental reasons, even though I would like a Ford Fiesta ST or another Ford Transit. So there we have it, from my 80s dumper truck to my present day motors and everything in between, from 14 wheels to 2 wheels. What's missing? Well, I'd love a three-wheeler Morgan. They just look like fun and I'd have another reason to wear me flying goggles. Anyway, thanks for watching and stay safe out there.